quite without warning, she erupts into a mini rant. I always think of that song, My Way, by Frank Sinatra. Regrets, I've had a few, but, then again, too few to mention. What utter nonsense! We've all made hundreds of mistakes. And isn't that how you learn? I hate that song. It's so smug, so unreal, so arrogant. We have met in a sun-filled courtyard outside a scout hall in southwest London where she's rehearsing a stage adaptation of Deborah Mogok's novel The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, subsequently a hit film. Haley is 76 now but as recognizable and pretty as her youthful incarnation, the hair worn ash blonde, the eyes still a sparkling blue, the manner friendly and unforced. The production kicks off in Richmond, London, tomorrow and then crisscrosses the UK until next summer although leading cast members, Rula Lenska and Paul Nicholas alongside Haley, are so far only committed until mid-February 2023. After a long stay in New York, Haley moved back to the UK about 12 years ago as her grandchildren started arriving. I loved living in New York while retaining a pie.air in London but the frequent transatlantic travel was proving too expensive so we made London our base. Her partner is Indian-born American actor Firdu Spamji. They met when they toured America in the title roles of The King and I. We started off as friends and then it became more. And don't you think that's the best way? Has 20 years her junior, totally irrelevant, and they've now been together 25 years. Haley has two sons. Christian, 49, by her first husband, director Roy Bolting, 32 years her senior, and Jason, but everyone calls him Ace, from her relationship with actor Lee Lawson, now the longtime partner and husband of Twiggy. Next year, delayed by COVID, Haley and big sister Juliet will appear in a play, by a very famous living playwright but I dare and say who, with Ace directing. Juliet and actor husband, Maxwell Caulfield, live in California. Younger brother Jonathan lives in Tasmania. Haley first found fame in 1959's Tiger Bay, opposite her father, John Mills, and went on to star in Pollyanna, The Parent Trap and the Raft of Disney Movies. And so to those regrets. Aged 15, she was offered the title role in the film of Lolita. I was rather keen to do it but Walt Disney and my parents were dead against it. And it's true that it would have totally altered the trajectory of my career. I'm not sure, though, that I would have had the level of awareness that Sue Lyon brought to the role. She won a childhood Oscar for Pollyanna but didn't attend as she was back in boarding school. The whole thing was played down to such an extent that, instead of having a healthy sense of reality, the opposite began to take effect. I was left with the overwhelming conviction that somehow my lucky break had been a mistake, and I started to feel guilty about my success. On adjusting to, first, puberty and then adolescence, she says, I hated my voice, my fat face, my spots. I became quite paranoid. I felt like a total failure as a person. I was like a small aeroplane in a tailspin, my confidence had collapsed and, along with it, my sense of self. It was a conundrum for my parents to get the balance right. My father was working all the time so my care fell to my mother. She hated being apart from him and she hated Hollywood. It's one of the reasons Mary Haley Bell sought solace in the bottle. A highly regarded writer, Mary's novel, 
Whistle Down the Wind, was adapted for the big screen, becoming one of Haley's most acclaimed films and one of her favorites. In June 1966, age 20, Haley was cast in The Family Way opposite Howell Bennett and directed by Roy Bolting. Required to be filmed in a hip bath, she was again assailed by negative body issues. It got to such a point that I started to seriously doubt whether they were bothering to put film in a camera when it came to my close-ups. Driving to Shepperton Studios one morning, I felt so desperate, so hopeless and wretched, so utterly consumed with gloom, that I resolved to end my life. I decided to put my foot down and accelerate. So I closed my eyes and just kept driving, and drove straight into a giant hedge. An invitation to join her father in Kenya, where he was making a movie, jolted her out of this vortex of negative introspection. It was the best thing I could have done, she writes in her refreshingly clear-eyed 2021 autobiography Forever Young. When you encounter the great aloneness of Africa, carries a sort of recognition, a deep primal connection, and all the pettiness of one's life falls away. Africa made me think and feel in a new way. I felt closer to God. By 1971, there had been two major events in her life. She'd fallen in love and married the much older Roy Bolting, and her tax affairs were in disarray. But I refused to live my life haunted by what ifs. I've been so lucky. I'm very grateful for the wonderful things that have come my way, my children, my grandchildren, my health, my partner of 25 years, my long-running career. Bitterness, says sweet, sordid Haley Mills, isn't a good look. The best exotic Marigold Hotel tour starts tomorrow, Marigold Show. Tom Haley on dot eating disorders for her role in 1966's Sky West and Crooked, Haley's character was described as waif-like. And by no stretch of the imagination could I be described as that. So she went on an ill-advised diet which seemed to comprise little more than hard-boiled eggs and white wine. I was plastered for three days, slept like a log and was as constipated as a crow. I lost five pounds but then promptly bought and consumed two Mars bars. The only solution, she reasoned, was to throw up after every meal. Her bulimia, which she came to realize was a known condition with its own name, was accompanied by feelings of failure, self-loathing and depression. But it was more than a desire to be thin. There was also the fear that I was growing up, something I felt no one wanted me to do, and that, if I stayed small and thin and looked like a child, maybe people would be more prepared to accept me. They didn't want the new Haley. they wanted the charming and appealing child, not the chubby, introverted adolescent. Haley on dot the taxman Haley's father set up a trust fund for her when she was just 14, with income tax paid on all her childhood earnings. However, after the Inland Revenue carried out a successful raid on a fund belonging to Lawrence of Arabia and Ben-Hur actor Jack Hawkins, the taxman began hunting for similar celebrity funds to plunder. Until she was 16, Haley had been allowed modest expenses. From then on, she received an annual salary of £400, worth about £10,000 today, her own checkbook and a post office account from which she could draw just £10 at a time. 
Her solicitor who, she felt, should have managed her financial affairs rather more assiduously, stood by as MRC demanded 91% of her total trust fund earnings. Her subsequent appeals over seven years, and through an escalating series of courts, went as high as the House of Lords where she ultimately lost her case. She was then also landed with a substantial costs bills. Apart from a villa she'd bought in the south of France and her property in the UK, she was left with little. I realized I would have to continue to work, like everyone else, for the rest of my life. 